Because the steadfast love of God, we come together and we celebrate the gracious salvation that we do find in our Christ. So rejoice also in the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's time for worship. Prepare to give God glory. All right, let me have an invocation. We come with thanksgiving in our hearts, O oh Lord. Our days have sometimes been rough, but we are grateful for the time to live. Our church has sometimes shown human weakness, and yet we are thankful for the divine freedom to be your people at this church. Our lives have sometimes been sprinkled with pain, and yet we rejoice in the health and the personal triumph that you provide each of us. You've heard some of our cries of help and concern with those who are ill, with those who are in the hospital. We ask for your healing hand. At times we have been anxious. Now we thank you for strength and peace. Be with us, O oh Lord, be with us. Amen. All right. Almighty God, the, the beauty of this season surrounds us, sunlight and rain, the growing of so many beautiful things. We thank you for the world in which we live. We bring our resources today that we may share with others and proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Amen. Well, I got some short scripture readings today because of the... Um, the business of the Holy Communion. I'll read John first. I am the living bread which <clears throat> came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, oh, he'll live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. And then going over to Paul's uh, couple of verses, the cup of the blessing which we bless, is it not? A participation in the blood of Christ. The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the same loaf. Uh, short lessons, but I think pretty important kind of lessons. Uh, let me, before I have a very short uh, meditation with you, have prayer again. <coughs> Lord, when we make ourselves the center of the universe, humble us under the starry skies. And yes, when we get all wrapped up in worry, and some of us worry a lot, <coughs> grant us the serenity of spirit that comes from meditation on the work of your hands. When we fret about having not enough time, remind us that a thousand years are but a day in your sight. And when we lose respect for life, enable us to see our kinship with all creatures, to feel the oneness of growing plants and walking animals and flying birds. When we mismanage this good earth, call us to be good stewards of the air that we pollute, the resources we sometimes forget, the soil we erode, the seed which we often dump into simply being garbage. When we feel alone, and some of us do, and we feel cut off from the rest of the world, surround us with the signs of love and the faces of friends. When we feel troubled by tension, Relax us by meditation and calm us as we remember you, as you have taught us to say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, technically, I don't know if we would call in terms of church furniture this uh, communion table. Sometimes we use it in an altar, but if you'll give me the freedom to call it a table this morning. Uh, some time ago, uh, a church uh, actually up in, in the Michigan area, um, a liturgical church, that means it's either Catholic or Episcopalian, and quite frankly, I don't know which one it was, the pastor tried to make a point when he had the call to worship. Uh, when they, after they had the call to worship, he asked them all to stand up and to applaud the Holy Spirit. They all looked at each other like, wonder what he's had for breakfast this morning. The same pastor, later, um, when he had a particular thing that he did in the worship service, um, he had somebody in the narthex, this is true by the way, put some firecrackers in the narthex so that they might think and understand the power of God. Again, they probably looked at each other and what he had for breakfast. Um, in the much dressed book that some of us remember years ago, uh, medium um, uh, is the message. Uh, it reminds us that sometimes how something is presented is often more important than what we're talking about. And that can be tri tricky, obviously. You know, it's not what you say, but how you say it. Some politicians are pretty good at that, aren't they? Actions speak louder than words. Mm, I told that to some kids in my family. Or I'd rather see a sermon, Reverend, than to hear your sermon. I understand that too. The medium is the message is nothing new. In our text from St. Paul, it says, For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Now we celebrate the Lord's death, and that, that seems like a silly thing to do. The point of it is, it was an historical fact that there was Jesus of Nazareth and that Jesus did die and that he did die for each of us. What the table is saying around us is truly, we need to celebrate our kinship with our Lord. And also to remember, it says, until he comes again. Now part of that has a double thing. It means that someday we believe as Christians, and I, I will admit in uh, the Methodist church, we don't talk about Jesus coming back that much. Some of you who have a different background, you might be saying to yourself, yeah, and I wish you would once in a while, but until he comes again. And it also reminds us that we are now new persons, new persons because of his resurrection, which means we will have a resurrection and certainly we will have new life. We participate in the resurrection this morning and what we're going to do. It, what I'm doing is having a very brief, old-fashioned, old-fashioned word. Some of you are going to say, gee, I remember that when I was a little bit younger. So we return this morning to some old words to give us hope. Bill's comment, I didn't even hear it. I didn't even listen to the news much yesterday. I worked outside. I, I want you all to know that I washed my car so that you would have some rain today. <laughs> it's true, surely. It's true. Um, but it is important, I think, for us to know that Christ will promise and give to us not only the gift of salvation, but the promise of new life. Love will conquer hatred. Hard to think of that right now, isn't it? We're someday going to be on the winning side of life. We shall overcome someday all of what seems to be so bad. In the meantime, we live our lives with patience. That's not easy for me. And it's hard to find confidence sometimes. We live in hope. Not only the hope of Christ returning, but the hope of the new life. The table today says a lot of different things, but it says to me, if but for a moment 
I can remember the Christ. I should also remember his gift of the resurrection. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to stay right down here. See how many of you can remember the old-fashioned way of doing this here. I start off with some scripture lines. You know, Bill, I, I borrow your glasses, but I need the light more than your glasses. <laughs> I am the living bread which comes down from heaven. If anyone eats of the bread, <coughs> he shall live forever. And the bread which I give for the life of the world is my flesh. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and he who loves is born of God and knows God. In this the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Here's the old invitation we used to say probably back in the 70s here in Delaware. All ye that truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near now and take to your comfort the sacrament and humble confession to Almighty God. Let me have a, a quick prayer of pardon. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who did of thy great Remind us of the forgiveness of our sins to all who heartily repent with their faith. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all of our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in the goodness and bring to us the everlasting life itself. Amen. Words of assurance. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. If we confess our sins... He or she is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It is very right and our bounden duty to share with the table of our Lord. Let me pray now a prayer of uh, consecration. Yeah, I need to uncover things now. I need to do this right. I know this is not liturgically correct. <laughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy gives to us so many things, we come together as a congregation called Peach Blow. May we feel your spirit as we share of the bread and the juice. Hear us, we humbly beseech you, who on that same night that he was betrayed took bread and after he had given thanks, he broke and he said, uh, this is my body which is given for you. As often as you eat of the bread, eat of it in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup and he said, this cup is the blood that I have shed for you. As you drink of the you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Two things I'd like to share here with you, and you will get the elements. I'd like you to hold the elements, and we'll do it all together. Are you with me? With both the bread and the juice. Uh, it's been a while since we've had communion again, so take your time. Don't feel like you're in a hurry. And uh, I think probably every person that's here this morning has lost someone that you love dearly, a significant person in your life. Um, I was in here for a couple hours one day this week, and uh, I was thinking about what I was going to do today, and I really felt the presence of my gal. The Lord Jesus Christ gave his body for you. Preserve thy soul in everlasting life. Take now and eat.
Jesus shed his blood for thee. Preserve thy soul into everlasting life as you drink of the cup. Remember, you're not simply here. You're here because of God's love for you. Amen. I thank you for what we've done here today. We're going to sing a hymn and close in prayer yet. Um, to those of you that are here as um, guests, um, it's really good to have you. I, I really mean that. And, uh, other than making making me feel a little older, it's, but you know, growing older beats the other alternative at least as much as I know about it. So I'm not I'm not. I'm going to close in benediction. Give you an opportunity. Uh, for the extended time together, as you just talked, and some of the air as visitors, you'll find out that we got some real talkers in the church. Now. <laughs> Let me pray a benediction. Who knows why new things may happen in the days ahead for you? Yeah, for you. So go in peace and love. Be secure in knowing that God watches over you. That your Lord makes life safe, not always easy, and may you feel the blessing that comes from God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Amen and amen. amen.